The best choir in the world. You thought I was joking. <laughs> the very best. The very best on planet Earth. Actually, because it's a congregation of gods, all the best in the world are kept here. You know, if I say less, then I become a liar. You know, Jesus said, if I say I'm not the son of God, I'll be a liar like you. So if I say there is, this is, le if I say this is lesser than, and then I'll be a liar. Because it's the conglomerate of gods, the epic center, the crown, the, <laughs> glory, I'm trying to find the English, the cup, the ultimate, the manifold wisdom display of the almighty. That's what you see. Amen? Amen. Praise God. Amen. If I was talking about you, give the Lord a hand. Come on. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. I won't take much of your time. Um... Last two Sundays, I was talking about Luke 18. The faith that triumphs in these last days, the faith that does not give up. And I explained to you how even the Lord met oppositions. And he looked at Simon at the beginning of this ministry, so you shall be called Cephas. And in three and a half years, he was behaving and misbehaving. Far from Cephas. But after three and a half years, he became Cephas. How the Lord told a gathering demoniac and said, I command you to come out of this man. And the demon replied, Jesus, I command you. In the name of your own father, don't disturb my life. <laughs> and we saw that the Luke 18 believer is a believer that does not give up, no matter what. He says, men ought always to pray and not to faint. And we said, in that Luke 18, when that woman went to the unjust judge, he denied her access of what she was asking initially, but confessed secretly that her coming is troubling his life. So sometimes you give Satan a command, and he can even respond, who is that idiot? <laughs> but that first command has unsettled him, but you don't know. And the judge comes out to attend to the woman. I said, woman, I told you I don't want to see you in this premises anymore. Get out of here. But he said, by her continual coming, she what? Troubleth me. So each statement of faith you make is making impact in the spirit, but you can't see it. And it appears that it's getting worse. But the Lord said, don't faint. Keep at it because it's working. And we said in Mark 11, when Jesus caused the fig tree, by the next day it had dried up. Peter said, oh, Look, the tree you cursed is dry. Jesus was trying to tell him, from the moment I cursed it, you just didn't see it. Water was sapping underground out of it. But you didn't see it, and it looked like it didn't work or it wasn't working. But from the moment I said, let no man eat fruit of thee again, it started working. So many times you said, it looks like it's not working because you can't see certain things happening. But the Lord is saying, Every statement is working. Now, even the gathering demoniac that replied Jesus, he said, don't torment me. That first statement was a torment. Though he did not leave, Jesus said, get out. He replied, I command you in the name of your father. Don't torment me. He is tormented. That means that statement has not left him the way it was anymore. Either way, he's no more comfortable in that body. But he has not left. And we give up seeing he has not left. But he's in torment already. And the Lord said, keep at it. Don't give up. 
Then we said, shall not God answer to his own elect, which cry, how? Day and night. So even with God, it's not once too. It's not once. Which cry, I guess I need to read it. Luke 18. For those especially who were not here before, Luke 18, I read from verse 1 to 8. He spake a Bible unto them to this end that men ought always to pray and not to faint, saying, There was in a city a judge which feared not God, neither regarded man. There was a widow in that city. She came to him, saying, Avenge me of mine adversary, and he will not for a while. But afterwards he said within himself, Though I fear not God nor regard man, yet because this widow troubleth me. So he's troubled already. He's in trouble. His state is no longer the same. Even if the woman doesn't come again, he's no longer going to be normal. But I would rather she finishes it. Troubleth me, I will avenge her. He's saying, now if she continues, she will wear me out. But I have one, two, three coming. She has troubled him. But he's not yet worn out. He says, I can't afford to be worn out. It's safer for me to answer her quickly before she wears me out. So even Satan himself is praying that you stop confessing. Because he knows if you continue, he must not get to the point where you are going to. He's finished. So he might say to himself, if I allow this one to continue, ah, it will burn me completely. So he's thinking, should I quickly let her have it or I should still delay a bit? He said, but he's already troubled. But he said to me himself, I must not let her wear me out. Because if she wears me out, he's finished. But by her continual coming, he's moving close to being worn out. He will quickly grant it. <coughs> but he doesn't show that face outside when it comes to attend to her. He doesn't show any sign of trouble. He doesn't show any sign of weariness. So she may think it's not working, but it's working. Then I go on. Verse 6. And the Lord said, Hear what the unjust judge said. Shall not God... Avenge his own elect, which cry day and night unto him, though he be along with them. I tell you, he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man comes, shall he find this kind of faith? That means this is the kind of faith they need on the last days, when the Lord is coming. And we said the Lord is coming soon. So he's looking for this kind of people. Now, even in dealing with God, God said he will respond speedily, but he's still going to demand night and day speaking. Meaning is not a one-time thing. So in dealing with God, which is speedily, you will need to keep saying it. How much more in dealing with Satan, which may not really be speedily, but it will still, you will still uh, get what you want. So it's a lifestyle where you don't stop until you get it. And we reviewed and we said, you must keep saying it and you must not faint. That's number one. Number two, we said... Every confession is causing ripples which you do not see in the spirit realm. Number three, God to demands. You skip saying it into his ears, which means it's not more than one. And then he says, number four, the result will be speedy, though you think it's delayed. Now, I want to quickly, because somebody may ask me, well, I've been saying it. I've not seen any result yet. And I don't mind to keep saying it. Well, how do I know that it's working? What if I'm saying the wrong thing? What if I'm not saying the right thing? You know, I once went to, um, because there's a way you say it with God. You know, I once went to a church. It was a Mother's Day and they were praying. During the morning, they were praying for the mothers. Say, let us pray that God will help our mothers not to raise bad children so that their children will not be wayward. So when it was time for me to minister, I said, can I correct you? I said, that's the wrong way to go to God. I said, God, don't let my mother be wayward. No, that's not a prayer. He doesn't even attend to such. I said, make my mother a virtuous, proud, wonderful, blessed woman. Don't say, don't make her wayward. Don't talk like that with God. He doesn't attend to such language. You say, rather, tell him what you want your mother to be, to raise godly, God-fearing, mighty princess, men who will shake heaven and earth for the kingdom. Oh God, make my mother 
a woman like Mary who will be blessed from generation to generation, having raised generals who will serve you and walk with you to the end. I said, that's a better way to talk to God. I said, oh, we see it. Sorry, thank you. I said, okay. So how do I know I'm speaking right into his ears? What are the parameters for me to measure that I'm on course, though I'm not seeing the result, yet I am on course? Number one, you must have peace. Did you hear me? You must have peace with God. Romans 5, 1 to 2. In fact, let me even first start with the scripture itself. How do you know? You know, in Isaiah 53, I told you, they asked a question, and they gave you the answer. It's, you know, the Bible always has what they call crunch. It will ask you a question, then it will give you the answer before asking you the question. So in Isaiah 53, it says, Who has believed our report? To whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? Of course, the answer is, the arm of the Lord is revealed. To who has believed your report, Abby? Now, the first way to know that you are in faith and you are not off course is that men ought always to pray and not to faint. So the first way to know you are not off course is that you are not fainting. It's the same, it's just there. <laughs> Honestly, if God does exam, objective, even a door person will pass. Not door, sorry. <laughs> I don't use door. It's basic, because the, okay, men ought always to pray and not to faint. How do you know you are in faith when you are not fainting? Abi? Eh? Ka, Abi? Oto? Who has believed that report? To whom is God's hand be shown? God's hand is shown to who has believed that report? It's, and they're mainly like that. <laughs> mainly. So when the Lord appears, you don't fret. Just calm down. Say, Lord Jesus, calm down, calm down. Let's calm because all your questions are simple, but they can easily be missed. So, Lord, take it easy. Oh, yeah, let's start now. Hey. But don't do as if you can know it. Tell him, oh, please help me, shall Because as simple as it is, they will still miss it if it doesn't help them, right? So the first way to know you're in faith is that you're not fainting. Right? How do you know I'm in faith? You're not fainting. Right? Good. So number two, peace. Good. Romans 5. Romans chapter 5, verse 1 to 2. Therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God. Peace with God. You know, there's peace from God. 2 Corinthians 1 2 is a salutation. All Christians have peace from God. All those who are walking according to this rule, who don't give up and keep saying it, have peace with God. All those who are establishing God's kingdom on the earth by faith have peace. Of God. There's a peace of God. When they say this English now, peace with God means you and I are peace. Abi, we are good. So you are good with God. There's no issue, there's no quarrel. Right? Good. That's if you are in order. If you are confessing right, <clears throat> Psalm 19 will apply. The meditations of your heart, the words of your mind are acceptable. So you are peace. With God. Peace from God. That's why it's all salutation. Every Christian has peace from God. Meaning, we're not fighting you. We're no more quarreling, no. I'm now your dad. But the prodigal soul was quarreling with the dad. Abby, was the dad quarreling with him? No. That's why they didn't say peace from you to God. No. Because you may be quarreling with God. God is not quarreling with any man. He's men quarreling with God. Right? I'll help you say, Pastor, leave that one, Joe. Leave that. Where was God? Where was God? I knew she was quarreling with God. Where was God? Ah, well, we, we are, we're not disputing God there, but leave that one. Leave that one. Anyway, Moshe, Moshe, she, let him do as he likes. I knew she was angry with God. And I, I, knew, I knew God will visit to try and then uh, he's going to pacify. Because he pacified the elder brother. He went to meet the brother. The brother was outside. He didn't enter. And the father went out. He didn't wait for him inside. He went out. He said, I hear you're not coming in. But what's the problem? He said, this your useless boy. He said, he was lost. He's found. That wasted with prostitutes. He was lost. And now he was dead. He's alive. He didn't call him useless. You know? And that's God. So, it's peace from God. 
Because it's not quarreling with you. Even if you're in sin, it's not quarreling with you. Right? Even if you're living, it's not quarreling. It's you quarreling with God. Ah, God, I serve you. I, I, I did they promote self and I was not one of them. I know what I did and I know what those people are doing. God is not fair. You know, you're already accusing him too. And the Bible says he's not um, favorable or partial to anyone. You know, people accuse God. They accuse him. They, you saw Adam to the woman you gave me. You know, you know, there are ways I can accuse you. Uh, why did you put this book here? Actually, how did this book get here? What have I done? I shifted the fault to you. Have you? But this water shouldn't be there. Ah! Why is the water here? What have I done? I've absorbed myself. So even Adam too had issues with God. But God had to say peace from God to all believers. Peace with God. Meaning my act where, where there's no quarrel between us. Neither between you and I or me and you. Have you? Then the peace of God, God's peace himself, the one God himself has that makes him God, then they give it to you. He said, great peace have they which love thy word. Nothing shall move them. He said, thou keep in perfect peace them whose mind is stayed on thee. And the peace of God that transcends human understanding will keep you. You can access it. It's the kingdom. You can be yours. The very peace of God. So you have peace. If you're speaking right, you'll be at peace. Somebody say, I'll just give one man and I will just close. And somebody says, well, me, I don't know about peace. <coughs> All I know is I'm not angry. <laughs> I've seen all sorts. Can you teach us? He said, the peace of God that transcends human, it can't be taught. If someone teaches you, it's not God's peace. I told her about the young man, I was then in those days, I was on a bike. Was it a bike or a car? I can't remember. I bet a bike or a car. So I passed, I was going to an estate of about 103 blocks. Each block has eight flats. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight. About 100 blocks. So I was trying to get my attention. I didn't see him. So I entered the estate. So he wanted to see me. So he got a bike and was chasing me. But by the time he got to the estate, got the bike and got to the estate, I'd enter the flat where I was. So he didn't know where I was. He said, okay. Isaiah 55 says, you shall be led forth with peace. He said, all right. As he moves, he feels peace. As he crosses back, he stops peace, then he moves back. He said, he goes right, he doesn't feel peace, he feels disturbed. He goes left, he feels peace, till he traced the flat where I was. Out of a, that's out of 800 flats. He traced where I was in about less than 20 minutes, following peace. That's how people can navigate life successfully. Just fall in peace. So you have peace. Amen. In fact, that prayer, Second Thessalonians um, 3, is it 3 or so? Say the God of peace will grant you peace always. Amen. By all means. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. I'll stop at the second. How do I know I'm in faith? Matthew 12. I read from verse 33. This is a very simple um, practice. You can study yourself. That's if you're very honest with yourself. Matthew 12 from verse 33. And it says, Either make the tree good or its fruit good, or make the tree corrupt and its fruit corrupt. For the tree is known by its fruit. O generation of vipers, how can you, being evil, speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. A good man out of the good treasure of the heart bringeth forth good things, and an evil man out of the evil treasure bringeth forth evil things. Then go to 2 Corinthians 4. I read verse 13. We have the same spirit of faith. According as it is written, I believed, therefore have I spoken. We also believe and therefore speak. So if you're in faith, it will spill naturally from your inside. You won't try to say it. So what it means is that if I'm believing God, for example, for a car, and I've spoken, 
And I said, God, I, I, you know, I believe God for a car. And I've um, spoken into God's ears what I like, but I'm yet to have it. I'm going to work. It's raining. I'm by the side of the road, and a car passes and splashes mud on me. A lot of people are terrible. Oh, that, look at this. Look at the road. You're not in faith. Splashes on you is my worry. It's just a little more car on the day. It will spear. Because an abundance is a spirit of faith. That spirit speaks. Whether you speak or not, that spirit will speak. So because it's speaking, you're not trying to say it. It's coming out naturally. I remember one time, I don't know whether this guy charmed all of us. I don't know what happened. There's that Mueva guy charmed us, used jazz on us. Myself, Francis, all of us. There's this LT boss when the pastor says, Oh, go. Oh, go. Yeah, it's coming. Then when the car passes, say, Ah, we were oh, go and yell. That's all go. He got to a stage. I said, Am I okay? <laughs> what has this guy used on me? I buy whatever he uses. In the name of Jesus. Ah, we said it till God came. Oh, God came. Ah, ah. He got to a stage. Every LT, we call it Muiwa Sogo. <laughs> Say, Muiwa, that's your God. Ah, so God. <laughs> I got to a stage. I've never seen Ogo. I knew the Ogo. I knew how to use this. I knew what this. I know how the inside. I've never seen this. I know how they put a kid inside. Kilo D. It was natural when you're with him in the boss. You're talking, you know, Abraham. Hey, I'll go. We're talking Abraham. He's in faith. He's in what? Faith. If we try to get it out of you, you are not in faith. You are fainted. Did you hear me? No, it's always jazz. But I've <laughs> jazzed all of us with faith. I don't know how he did it. Even people who don't see him. Ah, yesterday I saw a girl. I said, ah, ah. He was with all of us. He's still talking. And I guess that's what God used with Abraham. Because if they gave him a word that wasn't his name, everybody wouldn't get involved. I get they sped it up for him. Because when he said, my name is no more Abraham, exalted father. I'm Abraham, father of many nations. So everywhere, neighbor, hey, father of many nations, yo. Even people are angry with him. Where's the father of many? Where's this? Where's this man? This this old father of many nations in that anger, they're still prophesying. Then they're coming to quarrel because he's his servant injured one of their rams. I'm waiting for this, this Abraham, this father of many nations. Because they keep saying it, don't worry, which is what he did to all of us. You get it? Keep saying it, keep saying it, keep saying it till three months. You have everybody saying it by faith because in anger they are saying it. That means there's faith there. Right? And when they're not angry, they're saying it. You know, there's faith there. It's feeling, hey, leave him, Father, is one father of the Yema. Call him, Father, which one concerns you? Let him be father of a star and Jupiter and Pluto. They were added to his many nations unconsciously without knowing. And he's the father up to Pluto, Mars, and everywhere. So it must spill. By the time it starts spilling, you're on course, you're in faith. By the time you are trying to say it, eh, that car, hey, eh, see, we are believing God for car. No, you are not in faith. Right? By the time they are reminding you, eh, you said God, yes, so, yes, so, God, oh, ah, God will do it in Jesus' name. Oh, I've confessed, yes, you are not in faith. They are helping you to remember. They are not supposed to help you to remember. It's supposed to form a treasure in your heart that should be spilling out. With the Bible says, out of that good treasure, it would come. Nothing can stop it. Nothing, nothing, nothing created can stop it when it gets to that stage because you are in faith. So how do I know I'm in faith? It will naturally spill from your mouth. It will come out from your subconscious. I've heard somebody say, you know, some of you, there are slogans you have in emergency. Like if an emergency, I say, Jesus, that's what I say. 
I don't know what you say. I don't know what. Some, some people say, shop or no, you know. <laughs> and you wait there for sleep. Maybe you wait there for sleep, then you have like light that looks like fire. Just say, yeah, shop or no. So, oh, ah, I thought it was fire. <laughs> Unconsciously, they have faith in shop or no. Unconsciously. But if you do that to me, I'm going to scream, Jesus. <laughs> he said, that's what he said. Until we test it now, then we'll know. <laughs> because some of you, you know, different people have different, um, different exclamations. But those exclamations are treasures that are formed in your heart over long, continual hearing. It has become that, God forbid, in an emergency car, that's what spills. It spills. That's what you have faith in. Amen? Praise God. So we leave it with those three, and it will help you and guide you to know whether you need to keep saying it or you need to change what you are saying. Because if you keep struggling to say it, then you're saying the wrong thing. Then you need to change it. If you're saying it naturally, then you're saying the right thing. You don't need to change it. It's working. If you're saying it and you have peace, then you don't need to change it. It's working. If you're saying it and you don't faint, but what we'll be saying is this, Jare, well, uh, I know God exists, leave that one. Well, ah, I don't know, Sha. I don't know. But me, I know that if I was in Abuja, hmm, if I was in Abuja, and if I saw that, uh, that uncle, that senator, ah, God, even God will answer quickly. You have fainted, right? You have linked it to senator. Why did I mention senator? God forgive me, I shouldn't mention senator. Praise God. Well, maybe because they just appropriated 70 billion <laughs> for their, um, uh, what do they call it? For their own palliatives. <laughs> 70 billion. They have 500 billion for <coughs> 12 million Nigerians. They calculated it at 8,000 naira a month for six months at 48,000. Then they calculated 70 billion for 489 legislators. Comes to 144 million something. That's palliative. Did you hear me? I guess it has been in my mind. That's why I spilled too, I mean. <laughs> so if it has not been in my mind, do spill. I normally do, don't do such call senator. I, no, I don't do that. But I guess that's what's trending. You get it? I'm sure you mind 144 million palliatives. If you don't mind it, let me see your hand. Or you don't mind. 144 million, God gives you as palliatives. See, let me see your hand. You don't mind, Abby? <laughs> they can even increase the four more, Abby. <laughs> It is well. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. And um, you will have it. You will see it. You will handle it. You will experience it. You will have it. In the name of Jesus. And it will come speedily. It will not be delayed. And not only that, you'll be rewarded. For getting it by faith in the name of Jesus. Remember, that's what brought Jesus to the earth. That's how he was incarnated. Romans 10. He said, Who shall bring Jesus? He said, The word is near thee in thy heart and in thy mouth. That means one person. God put that word in one person's heart. And that person began to say it and spill to a point. God sent Gabriel, go to Mary. It's done. That's how Jesus came. He needed somebody's heart and somebody's mouth. And he brought him. And then Jesus used his own heart and his own mouth to return. He said, the son of man shall be crucified. After three days, he shall rise again. And he shall go to the exalted at the right hand of his own father. But I guess he didn't use his heart and mouth to bring himself. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. 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 All right. Um, we'll go straight to the business. Okay, we want to take the, the business first. Take that, then we'll go to the business of the day. Praise the Lord.